In the first part of protein synthesis, transcription, we copied a portion of DNA representing a gene onto messenger RNA. Both DNA and RNA are written in the same chemical language, since they are both nucleic acids. But now, in the second part of protein synthesis, translation, the chemical language of messenger RNA is being used to make a different type of chemical, not a nucleic acid, but a protein, also called a polypeptide, made up of amino acids. One type of chemical language is being translated or decoded into another. Translation takes place in the cytoplasm on ribosomes, the specific sites of protein synthesis. Ribosomes can be free or unattached in the cytoplasm, or they can be bound to other organelles, like the rough endoplasmic reticulum, where the ribosomes are embedded in the surface of the membranes. As long as there are ribosomes, messenger RNA molecules, and amino acid building blocks present in the cell, new polypeptides can be synthesized through translation. An analogy to think of to help you remember translation is cooking, where you are following a recipe. The recipe calls for specific ingredients at specific steps, which must be followed in the correct order for the meal to turn out right. We follow the recipe's instructions in the kitchen, where all of the ingredients are stored, and prepare the meal on the stove. Translation is carried out on the ribosome, the stove of the cell where the protein is made, and the ingredients, the amino acids, are found in the cytoplasm, the kitchen of the cell. Ribosomes are made inside the nucleus by the nucleolus, and they are part protein and part RNA, called ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. Ribosomes are assembled from two separate subunits, a small and large subunit. Both subunits are made independently by the nucleolus, and then exit the nucleus through a nuclear pore and enter the cytoplasm where they're assembled, along with the messenger RNA, into a functional protein synthesis translational unit. There are many nooks and crannies on the ribosomes, various grooves and pockets and processes that are used functionally to receive and read the messenger RNA, as well as help bond the amino acids together into the growing protein strand. The large subunit has three regions designated the A, P, and E sites. These are three pockets that accept the transfer RNA molecules. Think of the A site as the arrival site, as the transfer RNA molecule carrying an amino acid arrives at the ribosome, it will dock into the A site. The P site contains a transfer RNA molecule that has attached on its end the growing protein or polypeptide chain of amino acids. Think of the P site as the protein site. This area is helping to guide the assembled protein up and out of the ribosomal complex so it doesn't interfere with the translation of the messenger RNA below. The E site is the exit site where the transfer RNA after dropping off its amino acid, returns to the cytoplasm to pick up another one. Sandwiched between both ribosomal subunits is a groove where the messenger RNA binds and is read along its length during the translation process. The first step of translation is called initiation, the beginning of the translation process. When the gene was transcribed from DNA into messenger RNA, the DNA base triplets were coded into the messenger RNA molecule as RNA nucleotides, A, U, C, and G. We use a different term to describe every three RNA bases, which we call codons. A codon is just like a DNA base triplet, but is found within the RNA molecule. It is the language of RNA. 
every three RNA bases, a codon, have a significant meaning. Each codon is a three chemical code that corresponds to a specific amino acid that will be placed into its proper position and sequence in the growing polypeptide chain. Here is the small ribosomal subunit that will attach to messenger RNA. At the initiation site, there is a start codon symbolized by the bases AUG. The start codon is like the beginning of a sentence. It serves as the recognition and docking site for the first incoming transfer RNA molecule, the initiator transfer RNA. One side of the initiator transfer RNA contains three bases that are complementary to the messenger RNA codon, called the anticodon. As it arrives, the transfer RNA anticodon forms temporary hydrogen bonds to the messenger RNA codon. AUG is messenger RNA's start codon. So following RNA's complementary base pair rules, A bonds to U and C bonds to G and vice versa, A bonds to U, U bonds to A, and G bonds to C. As the anticodon UAC bonds to the start codon, it tells the whole complex that protein synthesis has begun. The amino acid methionine symbolized as MET, bound to the other end of the transfer RNA, will be the first amino acid in the polypeptide sequence. Now we're ready to finish assembling the rest of the ribosomal complex and then translate the messenger RNA sequence, codon by codon, into the polypeptide chain. In step two, the large ribosomal subunit attaches to the small subunit to form a complete ribosomal complex. Look where the initiator transfer RNA is now located. It's in the P site, with its methionine amino acid still attached. The A site is open and ready to receive the arrival of the second transfer RNA. The next messenger RNA codon in the sequence is UCA. So what anticodon will match up with it? Yes, it's AGU. So this must be the anticodon of the next incoming transfer RNA, which is carrying the amino acid serine, abbreviated SER, the next amino acid in the growing protein. In step three, the anticodon of the next incoming transfer RNA temporarily attaches to the messenger RNA codon, UCA. The two transfer RNA molecules are positioned close to each other, and the shape of the large ribosomal subunit helps orient their amino acids so they'll make contact and attach to each other through the formation of a peptide bond, a strong carbon to nitrogen covalent bond. This is the early protein composed of two amino acids. Next in step four, the initiator transfer RNA exits the large subunit from the E site and returns to the cytoplasm where it can bond to another methionine amino acid and bring it back to the growing protein chain. There is a shift as the entire translation complex moves from right to left. The transfer RNA bonded to both amino acids slides over from the A site to the P site. This leaves the A site open for the next incoming transfer RNA. In step 5A, as the ribosomal complex slides from right to left, so does the messenger RNA, as it moves to the next codon in the sequence, UUG. This codon calls for the transfer RNA bearing the anticodon AAC and carrying the amino acid leucine, symbolized LEU, which docks at the A site. In step 5b, the process continues assembly line style. The protein elongates as the amino acid leucine bonds to the amino acid chain. 
the complex slides from right to left, and now the messenger RNA codon, CAG, is calling for the transfer RNA bearing the anticodon, GUC, and carrying the amino acid glutamine, symbolized GLN, which docks at the A site. In step 5C, the protein continues to elongate as the amino acid glutamine bonds to the growing amino acid chain. The complex slides from right to left, and now the messenger RNA codon, CGA, is calling for the transfer RNA bearing the anticodon, GCU, and carrying the amino acid arginine, symbolized ARG, which docks at the A site. In step 5D, arginine attaches to the growing amino acid chain and the complex slides from right to left. We have now reached the last messenger RNA codon in the sequence, UAG, which is one of three different stop codons that bring translation to an end. The other possible stop codons are UAA and UGA. Notice that the transfer RNA arriving at the A site is not carrying an amino acid. In step six, we've reached the termination stage, which marks the end of translation. The stop codon UAG acts like a period at the end of a sentence. It signifies the ending of the entire translation process, as we've now translated the gene and synthesized the protein according to the gene's instructions. The ribosomal complex can now be disassembled. The small and large subunits break free from each other, and the messenger RNA detaches from the small subunit. We're left with a completed amino acid chain that forms the brand new polypeptide. It now enters a post-translational stage where it will become a functional protein and remain inside the cell or be exported out to serve its purpose in the body.